They were the most feared weapons of the Civil War, an innovation that changed naval warfare forever. Ironclads. The age of the iron warship began nearly a year into the Civil War, when, on March 8, 1862, the Confederate ironclad Merrimack steamed into the James River at Hampton Roads and laid waste to the Union fleet stationed there. The Merrimack sank two Union warships, killing or wounding 400 men. And despite a heroic effort, there was nothing the Union fleet could do to stop this iron monster. The next day, a new vessel appeared on the scene, the Union ironclad Monitor. History was made as the first battle of ironclad warships began. For three hours, the two vessels pounded each other at point-blank range, but neither sustained any real damage. While the battle had no clear victor, one thing was certain. The combat between these first two ironclad ships had an impact around the world instantaneously. Immediately following that, contracts for wooden ships for, you, for navies around the world were canceled. The era of wooden warships was certainly ending. The battle between these two iron giants seized the public imagination. There was an awe that came around these uh, because they were brand new. It would be a little bit like uh, the first time we heard of ICBMs. You know, this was, uh, it was something uh, entirely new and fearsome. The Monitor and the Merrimack are the best known ironclads of the Civil War. But ironclads were actually built in large numbers by both sides. Early in the war, President Abraham Lincoln had instituted the Anaconda Plan, a massive naval blockade of the southern coast. Everybody knew that the South did not have the same capability to manufacture uh, war material and, um, and generate wealth in order to be able to fight a war without being able to communicate outside, without going to Europe particularly to send cotton out and to bring war material back in. The Union blockade was to be a cordon of vessels around the coastline of the Confederate States, but with the concentration at the seaports to try and halt the importation of vital supplies into the Confederacy. By 1862, with hundreds of Union warships taking part, the blockade had taken a toll on the South's ability to wage war. Although it would never completely close off supplies of food and war materials coming in from Europe, it would slow it to a trickle, thus having to rely upon what could be produced in the interior or the heartland of the Confederacy, the South could not long survive. The South simply didn't have the facilities or the resources uh, to, to build a Navy that could compete with the United States Navy. So they had to come up with creative, innovative ways to challenge the blockade. The Confederacy seized on the ironclad as their salvation. The Merrimack's success against the Union fleet greatly impressed Confederate Secretary of the Navy, Stephen Mallory. He understood what was going on with the technology, and he knew the South would have to, to adopt this technology if they had any chance at all of, of taking on the U.S. Navy. The Confederate Navy planned to build 50 or more ironclads. Of these, approximately 24 were actually put into service, far more than most people realize. 